We are back with a brand new tactic on the channel, the 4-3-3 strikerless formation. As you will have seen from the thumbnail, we are playing without a central striker. Today we are testing this out with Bayern Munich, favourites odds on to win the Bundesliga. Also trying it out with Real Sociedad, predicted to finish in 6th place at 50-1, to joint odds with 4th placed Villarreal. And lastly, we will be testing this out with Leeds United. Predicted to finish 17th, odds of 500-1. to Predicted to narrowly avoid the drop. However, in real life, they obviously did go down. We will see if the 4 3 3 strikers can push them further up the table than they inevitably ended up in real life. We'll get straight into the tactic and the results now. Here we are with Bayern Munich, and unfortunately, we have not managed to secure the Bundesliga this season, finishing second place behind RB Leipzig, two points off the pace. However, we did win a quote unquote double with the DFL Super Cup and DFB Pakal making up the two trophies. Overall, I mean, it's two trophies in the bag, but it's not a good season for Bayern Munich. Second in the league and our last 16 knockout to Ajax in the Champions League. Take a look at the schedule, see exactly where we lost points and where, where we ended up picking our points up. So, beat RB Leipzig in the Super Cup to start the season off, 5-3. Sarri Mane with one, Graven Burst with one, Delict with a goal and Thomas Muller with two. Started off the season very, very well. Um, dispatching of Wegberg Beek. You know, you always if you if you've played in the Bundesliga, you know in the first round you always come up against a lower league team and it's usually a drubbing. They then went on, beat Spurs 3-1 in the Champions League, beat Shakhtar 2-1, drew with Marseille, beat Marseille again, uh, beat Shakhtar and then beat Spurs, so we've comfortably qualified from that group. Just look through the fixture, see if there's any notable victories, notable defeats. Beat FC Cologne 5-0 here, Muller with a double. Kingsley Coleman, Pavard and Chupamoting with the goals. Uh, beat Hamburg 3-2 in the third round of the cup. Champions League lost 2-1 away to Ajax and then at home drew 2 all. Not, not a great out in 4-3 in aggregate to Ajax in the last 16. A competition that we would have wanted to be going far in. A massive victory over Dortmund, however, in April 7-0. Thomas Miller with 5 goals, Sadio Mane with 2 and from there we just went on and did not lose another game however it was not enough to win the title we actually dropped two points in the last day of the season so i'm actually going to go back and check if we were pole position up until that final game in which we conceded in the 95th minute i need to go and check that in a second see if a 95th minute goal for fc Cologne has cost us the title but then we followed it up anyway a week later with a 2-1 victory over RB Leipzig in the cup. Now, let's just go to the Bundesliga and check exactly how that happened. We, well, I mean, it would have been a bit cheeky. We were second from the middle of February, went up above them. And the second last day of the season, we beat Leipzig 2-0. Must have been thinking that we were winning the league there. And then a 95th minute goal from FC Cologne gifts them the title that is hard to take very hard to take uh, we'll take a quick look at the squad Thomas Muller 29 goals Musial 20 Manny with 16 and then Coleman with 8 and then as you can see a lot of players with 6 and 5 goals assists again spread out really well Kimmich with 13 Afonso Davies with 12 Cancelo with 9 Thomas Muller with 8 Looking on the data hub, we can see we've scored just over two goals a game, higher than the Bundesliga average, and we've conceded 0.71 a game. Um, I've always said if you score more than two goals a game, if you concede less than one goal a game, you generally tend to win the league. However, unfortunately not in this case. We'll take a look at the XG tables to see how we were expected to get on. So... In terms of expected points and expected goals, we were expected to come first. That's not really what I wanted to see. So we have out sorry, we've underperformed HG by just under eleven goals. We've underperformed in points by eight, and we we're obviously expected to finish first. That is gutting to take. So although Bayern Munich have won a double, they could have won a treble if they had not conceded in the 95th minute. Now we'll head straight over and look at Real Sociedad over in Spain and see how this tactic has done for themselves. 
Well, things are much better over in Spain for Real Sociedad as they have managed to finish third in La Liga and qualify for the Champions League. Uh, quarter-final knockout to Arsenal in the Europa League is a bit hard to take as well as the Copa del Rey fourth round to Atletico Madrid. Been knocked out by two, I would say, better sides, obviously. Um, however, it is just a, you would have maybe wanted to get to a semi-final of one of the two cups. But only finishing six points below Barcelona in La Liga is a brilliant, brilliant achievement. Again, as always, we will take a look at the schedule and see where... Why does this always pop down? If anyone knows, please let me know. So, start of the season, 0-0 draw. Home to Villarreal, then lost out to Atletico Madrid, who seems to be our nemesis if they've beat us in the cup as well. And we'll just take a look through the Europa League group. Lost to Man United, beat Slovakia. And they beat Bratislava twice, beat Slovakia again, 4-0, great result. And then we actually beat Man United at home in the last game. I'm assuming Man United are already qualified, so probably put a bit of a weak inside there. And then we'll just scroll through, you can take a look, see all the results. Um, we had a great end to the season after losing 4-0 to Real yeah, Madrid. We then went on and picked up nearly maximum points if it wasn't for a 0-0 draw um, at home to Celta Vigo on the third last day of the season. Goal scorers, we will take a look. Uh, Barenthia, I don't know if that's pronounced correctly, I think so, I think uh, the sound I made is how that's pronounced, I don't know, let me know. Um, sorry, 24 goals from Ander, Kubo with 15, Carlos Fernandez with 11, David Silva with 11, yeah, Mikko Marino with 5 goals, 7 assists, great from him, and again, assists and goals spread out really well amongst the entire squad. Taking a look at the data hub, we can see 1.84 goals per game, conceded 0.87. What did I tell you? Two or more, and you look like you're winning the league, under one conceded, and it looks like you're winning the league, and we finished third. So those numbers kind of back up my points, in a way. Uh, look at this setup, give me two seconds. What am I looking for? XG table. And this is what I always like to display in my analytics. So, expected goals, 66.4. We managed to score 70. Expected points, just over 73. We got 78. And we finished exactly where our goals and points predicted us, which is great. Um, better turnout for Real Sociedad than it was Bayern Munich in terms of where we were expected. So that's great to see. And we will now... Lastly, go and look at Leeds United, see exactly how this is done, see if they've managed to survive in the Premier League. Well, we didn't just survive with the 4-3-3 strikers formation with Leeds United, we've managed to finish all the way up in 8th place above Chelsea. 8th place is a brilliant finish for Leeds United, however, if you look at the points tallies, you could also say it's a bit gutting. We're only one point off, one sorry, one point away from Newcastle and Europa Conference League football. We're only four points off Spurs in sixth with Europa League football, and we're even only seven points away from Manchester United, and that would have been enough for Champions League football. However, eighth place finish for Leeds United's fans, I'm sure they would have much, much preferred that this year. Unfortunately, two cup eggs at second round of the Carabao Cup to Aston Villa and a fifth round exit to Crystal Palace in the Emirates FA Cup. Again, take a look at the schedule. This will pop back down, so here we are. Yep, pop back down. I don't know why it does it the first time you do it. If anyone knows again, let me know. So, looks like we had a very, very poor start to the season. So this is pre-World Cup, and then this is the last two games of the calendar year. So, from the start of the season to... The turn of the new year, we only managed to win, what's that, five Premier League games while getting battered in quite a few of them. 3-1 loss to Liverpool, uh, lost to Arsenal, drew Man United, good, um, lost to Bournemouth, lost to Brentford. These are games that we should have been winning, um, maybe not quite the Brentford game, but Bournemouth should have won. Um, Tottenham draw, Newcastle draw, and after the World Cup. We got a victory over Everton and a victory over Fulham. So it must be the second half of the season where we really saw our form pick up and push us right up the table. So here we are, the second half, second half after this 1st of January. And we can see we had a lot of wins here. Draw my at the start, beating Wolves, beating Liverpool 1-0 at home. 
uh, loose and instead of getting the goal there. Beating Leicester, beating Fulham again, beating Newcastle, and then beating Chelsea, beating Chelsea again 3-2. Sinister Rodrigo and Christensen with the goals. Losing 3-1 to City and then win the last two games, West Ham 2-1 and Brighton 1-0. Now I want to see our kind of whoops, perform not Chelsea. Us so yeah, as you can see. Which is the yeah. So pre-World Cup we were sitting down in 17th as predicted. We were sitting in 17th just above the relegation spaces. And then from the World Cup, as you can see, just a gradual rise, and then it's from here we come up, and then from big match week 33, we look like we're gonna finish eighth all along, apart from one slight blip after the loss to Manchester City. Um, we'll take a look at the squad, see who's getting the goals, getting the assists, the usual. So Brendan Arson with 13 goals, five assists, Jack Arson 12 and eight, Sinister with 11 and 4, and then Wilfred Nonto with 9 goals, 0 assists. So, a lot less goals it looks like for Leeds United, however. doesn't In a way, it doesn't matter if you score the goals. Obviously, you want to score a lot of goals, and if you score a lot of goals, you'll win trophies. However, sometimes just a good defence, which it looks like this might have been the case, has managed to propel them up the table. Take a look at the data hub. However, 1.37 conceded per game, 1.63 goals per game. So... We have conceded more goals per game and scored a lot less per game. However, I would say that this has been the better of the sides because they've massively performed themselves. So we've scored an extra eight goals than expected, finished with an extra six points than expected and finished one place higher than our expected points predicted, which is phenomenal. So now what you've all been thinking is we will go now and look at the tactic for if you want to test this out yourself or if you want to even play with this tactic maybe if you can tweak it let me know see if you can get it a little bit better than i've managed to get it um, so we'll do that right now and have a look at the tactic itself and here we are the 4-3-3 strikerless formation i'll just run through the positions themselves before going into the team instructions so we have a sweeper keeper on attack at the back back four of two wing backs both on attack and two ball playing defenders both on defend middle of the park we've got defensive midfielder on defend a segundo de volante sorry on support as well as an advanced playmaker on attack and then the midfield sorry the attacking midfield three two inside forwards on attack and a support striker on attack absolutely none of these players have any additional instructions on them i wanted to just try this tactic out and go as basic as we could without adding in loads of different player instructions so we've got a positive mentality here in possession we're going to pass the ball into space play out of defense and play at a higher tempo in the transition we are taking short kicks out to the center backs and we are countering and we are using the counter press out of possession we are going with a high press we are pressing much more often and we're preventing the short goalkeeper distribution. We're just going to tell our players to get stuck in and step up more. And that is the 4-3-3 strikerless formation. As I said, if you want to try this out, I will be putting it up on the FM Scout website at some point this week. Probably tonight or tomorrow. Or if not, because there's not the personal instructions for the players, you can just literally pause the video here and copy it like for like. Let me know in the description if you try this tactic out if you can find a if you've been able to get a better cyclist formation i'd love to see it but as always please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying the content as i said i now have an office space worked up so i'm going to be getting more content out and as i get more content out the quality of the content will get better both visually and in terms of audio so please Bear with me while I get things done and again thank you for watching and I will see you next time.